Joe with Jolie Farms. Welcome back to the channel. So uh, we're here today in Vilcabamba, Ecuador at our homestead, and we're going to bring you a little bit different video today. We tried to do this the other day during our uh, homestead group meeting to demonstrate wicking tubs or wicking buckets, and uh, we failed miserably. <laughs> Uh, video didn't work, sound didn't work, we had a lot of issues. So we're going to do this again today here at home in a little bit more controlled environment. Uh, a little windy today, but I think it'll be just fine. So the idea of a wicking tub is um, that you have a small reservoir in the bottom of water and the soil mix that we put in there actually wicks up the water that the plant needs. We have a little uh, gravel in the bottom of the tub and we control this water. We water down through a tube, much like this, where we've cut the bottom of there. You'll see the video. And uh, so the water runs out when we water down this tube. So we want to make sure that we control that water. Um, if it dries out completely, it's very hard to get that capillary action to happen again. So we want to make sure we keep water in the reservoir and the plant's roots will learn to grow down to the water. That's what we want. Our mixture, as you'll see in a minute, is a mix of white peat, perlite, got some of our sifted compost that we produce here on the property, and we mix that all together. I've also added some chicken uh, litter fertilizer to that, and this is a uh, organic certified um, uh, product that we get right here in Ecuador, here in Loja. And so it's pelleted, I mixed that already in, so there's plenty of fertilizer for the plant as it grows. We're going to be putting a blueberry in ours today. You can grow root crops. These grow carrots extremely well. You can grow onions in these, lettuces, just about anything you want. Um, we've grown sweet potatoes in a five-gallon bucket this way. And I'll tell you, we grow five pounds of sweet potatoes in, in a five-gallon bucket. It's pretty impressive the kind of quantity that you can get. Now, what I've done is um, these are tubs that I've managed to find in Loja. And... Uh, so um, you can use whatever you can get your hands on. These are kind of expensive. We've caulked up the little drain holes on the bottom. And the idea is um, we don't want all that water running out. We want the last three inches of water to be saved. So that way we've got that reservoir always. But I've also drilled a 7 8 hole right here. Now, you could drill smaller holes and drill more of them. But I've come up about three inches to drill that hole. Now, what's important about this hole is if you get a heavy rainstorm and you don't have a way for the excess water to drain out, then it will flood your plant, rot your roots, and you're all done. So this is basically an overflow hole, and uh, we'll be filling gravel right up to the top of that hole. And that is, this tube will sit down inside the gravel and make that happen. Okay, so we're going to place our fill tube on the opposite side from where our um, overflow hole is so that our water didn't just run straight out when we add water. So it's going to be opposite of our overflow and we're going to go ahead and pour this gravel. This is pretty big gravel. It could be any size. That was noisy. I'm securing the gravel around my fill tube so that it doesn't move. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place some old window screen that we have. And you can use weed block, window screen, whatever you've got. We just happen to have some of this. I've cut a little hole. That'll go around the fill tube. And uh, to the bottom down here. And the idea of the window screen is it is a separator between our soil mix and our gravel. We don't want our gravel becoming clogged with soil mix, so we want to keep those separated to keep that capillary action happen properly. And we don't want to clog any of this uh, gravel down here at the bottom. Great, so that's the idea behind that. And um, as I said, you can use whatever you've got on hand. You can use some, some old weed block or a window screen, whatever you might have. Um, this is what we're using today. Now we've done this on our farm in Texas in rectangle beds that were 14 feet long. Um, they were 16 inches deep and four feet wide. And we used a 
food grade liner in there called Duraskrim and a uh, big uh, overflow at one end. And so um, these beds were extremely successful. We grew beets and carrots and all sorts of things in those beds. Root crops especially love this idea and uh, it allows them to grow real well. This is a great way to grow um, on a patio or you know somewhere where you don't have a, a whole lot of land or very good soil. This is a way to get it done. All right, so we're gonna add our, um, our soil mix here now. Okay, here's our soil mix. And this, as I said, is white peat perlite mix that I get here in Loja. And I've sifted compost uh, from our compost pile and mixed that in there along with the fertilizer. This is all organic. Now a bucket of this size takes quite a bit. You don't have to have a bucket this big, but we are doing a, a, a wicking tub this size mainly because we're using a blueberry plant. So this blueberry bush is going to take a little bit of room. We want to make sure he has some room to grow. So this is a blueberry bush I got at our local uh, nursery. And I'll say it's not the best one I've ever seen. Not a lot of root ball in them, but um, you know, it'll do. They'll grow and uh, it'll look nice and healthy in, in no time. Now one of the things about blueberry is they need really acidic soil. So they need a pH level of you know, 6.0, 5.5, right in that area would be great. Um, that's really hard to manage that here in normal soil conditions. So having it in the wicking tub is going to allow us to uh, keep that, that uh, pH level at a proper, a proper level to where the blueberry will like it and flourish. If your pH is above seven, your blueberry is probably never gonna do well. It certainly isn't gonna blossom and have a lot of fruit. Um, so we like ours to have fruit. We have several plants already that we planted in containers and have proven extremely good um, in containers. And um, we get lots and lots of blueberries. Now, I would say four or five of these on your back porch like this, you probably have all the blueberries you'll ever need or ever want. And uh, you can have them in your smoothie every morning. You can mix them, uh, uh, actually, put them in a dehydrator, dehydrate them, and then pulverize them, make a blueberry powder. Um, you can do a lot of different things with them. You can freeze them. All right, I'm gonna pour the rest of this in there. I want my uh, plant to be buried pretty deep in there so that it will uh, stand up good as it gets bigger. I'll pack it in just a little bit. Now, we will top water this a little bit when we get it in place but I'm gonna mainly water it down the tube. Now I wanna get the topsoil kind of packed in, but after this, I won't water it from the top again. I'll only water it down to the tube. Remember, we want the capillary action happening where it's wicking up like a sponge and bringing that water up to the plant. And um, if at any time uh, you've overwatered, you're not getting good drainage, you can always add more drain holes. Uh, but if you reach down with your finger into your soil mix, and you come up with a hand of smelly, smelly soil, then your roots are probably getting rotten. You need to repot your, so your, your plant. Um, this soil down there should not smell bad. It should always be nice and clean um, if you're draining properly. So if for some reason you're not draining properly, you may need to consider drilling some more holes uh, so that you have a nice overflow going. And that's one of the reasons I have a big 7 8 hole is I don't want that hole to become clogged by anything. I want to make sure that the water can freely flow out that hole. So this is how we do our blueberry plants. Hope you'll uh, give this a try yourself. This little plant here has already got some little baby blueberries on it, actually. Got some up here as well. So this guy's going to do real well. We're real happy with it. And of course, we try to water these with rainwater. And um, that always improves things because rainwater is pH neutral. And we want to see that happen. All right, hope you enjoyed the video. Ciao for now.